Like, I mean, it's been four months that it's like I'm with her every single day, like every day, which is kind of a lot, but it's also just incredible to watch her grow. And then for, you know, I think there's just like a lot of security that comes with it. You know what I mean? I think she like mm -hmm. is feeling very good about things now, which is really cool. That's, That's awesome. I'm Irby, and this is the Breathe Entertainment Podcast. Today, we have our very own, our first guest ever, the talented, the marvelous, the wonderful Matt Lyons, cinematographer. Um, hi, Matt. Welcome to Breathe Entertainment Podcast. Hello. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for gracing our podcast. Right. Blessing us. Thank you. <laughs> um, so today we're just going to be talking with you, um, going over, you know, your career, you know, the good work that you did with us um, on Split Filter and, you know, your future and what you plan on doing, um, you sure. know, with your work. Um, so let me start with this question. Usually, you know, the host gives this big old bio of who you are, mm -hmm. but I want to ask you, who is Matt Lyons? Oh boy, that's, I don't know, simple and complicated at the same time. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a parent for one and a husband and a cinematographer and camera operator. And it's just, I'm just striving to do good work and to work with great people and tell great stories and trying to constantly push myself to do new projects, uh, new challenges. And just, you know, go places in my career that I haven't been before and just to kind of like be out of my comfort zone a little bit is uh what i'm looking to do so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and, and you, you've been doing it um I've, I've, I've seen some of your projects and the stuff that you've been doing um you've really been working on so many different things um and it's exciting you know to be yeah. able to see that uh that's great yeah, you, thanks yeah of course of course <laughs> yeah i mean it's been super awesome just to see like your other work because we've seen your work for split filter but to see like the work that you're doing like with netflix which we will get into a little later sure it's just really really awesome no, um nice. so speaking of your work how would you describe cinematography uh being a dp to like a baby filmmaker um it's basically the way i see it is kind of like i'm there to help facilitate the with the director and to put all the pieces together and to mm -hmm. um to you know um help fulfill the director's vision and help tell the story visually um and with it that comes you know there's a, a bit of technical knowledge that you have to have before you can do it um and then there should be a bit of uh creativity involved too so that you can be a little bit uh, loose and, and flowing with your, your style so that you can, you know, you can adapt and change and make things work. If something's, if something's not working, you can change quickly and try to make that work. And you also have to be, I think, pretty easygoing in the sense that, uh, you know, since you're fulfilling the director's vision, you have to be able to work with them and be open to their ideas and not have a huge ego and take everything as like, it's, you know, you want to take ownership in your work, but it's, you know, you have to be able to, to give in a little bit, you know, yeah. and be accommodating, yeah. so. Yeah, that's very true with you. Right. Um, Matt is definitely somebody I, I can definitely say is a great collaborator. Thanks. Um, doesn't feel like, you know, you know what you're doing, you know what I mean? You know what you're mm -hmm. doing, but at the same time, for us novices, you know, it was amazing to see how you are willing to, you know, take what we were saying, especially Samantha being the director for Split Filter, to see you take what we're saying and to, even though we didn't have the technical terms, mm -hmm. technical words or the knowledge, you know, you were able to take what we had in mind um, and bring it to life. Your patience was amazing. Thank Thanks. You yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, Matt. I've always said that. I've always um said that I, I i was lucky to work with you you know because coming into this as 
someone who has no idea what they were doing and I'm and I was learning as I was going and you were mm -hmm. so patient with me and you know you would you would take my ideas and you would collaborate with me and I and I really appreciate that Matt like for for my first time it was a great introduction to the to the field so thank you so mm -hmm. much no of course I'm glad I was able to do it and it was a pleasure and I, I loved working with you guys I mean I, you know it was very enjoyable for me too so yeah. So I have a question for you, Matt. Um, how did you get to just tell us uh, your history and the background of how you got started into DPing and who are your biggest influences um, and who impacted your career? Um, how I got started in it, I, I went to uh, school for video production um, kind of accidentally. I, was, I started to go to school to Art Institute of Philadelphia for music production and sound recording. Um, and right when I, cause I was a huge, I'm, I've been a huge fan of music my whole life. And it's just like something I really wanted to do. And when I was starting school, like six months before I actually was supposed to start, that program was kind of dissolving. And the, uh, the, the counselor there was kind of like, oh, you should just do video production. It's like the next closest thing, you know, you'll do some music recording or like some sound recording type stuff. And you know, it's kind of similar. So I had no background in video. I had no knowledge of it, not a huge interest or anything. I mean, I've been a fan of films and, and, and TV shows my entire life and I watch things constantly, but I didn't think it was where I was gonna end up with my career or whatever. Um, so I started video production. Once I got into some editing classes, I really enjoyed it. And then once I started shooting, I enjoyed it even more. Um, and then I was lucky enough to get an internship at a small little production company and right away within a couple of weeks, they just trusted me to just shoot like B cam on some of their projects. And they did a lot of like corporate video and like weddings and bar mitzvahs and events and little commercials and stuff like that. So it was why like, you know, it was like uh, full scale enough that I was able to like see how different productions worked. Some things were really small, some were a little bigger and it, I learned a ton there um, and worked with some great people there and they, they, you know, put trust in me, which was really great. And and then from there, I went to NFL Films um, and became their prep tech because they have a huge equipment inventory and a lot of cameras and gear and shoots of all kinds and sizes. So I was kind of in charge of handling the gear. And that's when I really like, learned the technical side of things and the ins and outs of all the different camera systems and lenses. And some of the cinematographers that I worked with there were just extremely talented and always pushing things to to be creative and just like push boundaries and everything. And so I learned a lot from those guys. Um, and then I started shooting for them and I was just trying to get better as I went because it was a kind of a high bar there, you know, because oh, yeah. you got feedback right away, you know, on your projects and on your shoots. And if it wasn't good, you would hear about it. And, and if they liked it, that, that was great. And you would hear about that too. So having that um, was definitely like helpful and yeah, from there, it's just I've been just trying to do more things and not just sports, not just documentaries, but the narrative and I don't know, just work with as many different people as possible and on as many and like as varied as varied projects as possible. And it's just something I've been I really care about now. And it's uh, yeah, it's great. I, I don't know. I love it. But yeah, so my influences over the years have just been a lot of the people that I've worked with. And maybe not even because of the work that they do, but just how they, their demeanor, their approach to the work, um, the way they treat other people. Uh, and I just feel like, you know, cinematography is a, uh, it's an, it's an amazing thing where people, it's very collaborative. Um, but it, it definitely takes like an individual drive and desire to want to create. And I think, that's kind of what I find fascinating about it. And that's what I've been like intrigued by more recently. And the more people I've talked to about it, it seems like there's a commonality there and a lot of people share the same kind of visions and, you know, drive that I think I have, so. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, Matt, if you said, you said you enjoyed watching movies, so I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> have a tea of memory. Um, what is, what films had the biggest impact uh, on you as a person that made you want to jump into narratives? Um, God, over the years, there's, I mean, there's been so many good movies, but it's, it's honestly like since, ha since my daughter, she's about to turn seven. 
So we're watching all these films that I watched when I was a kid and I'm realizing, and it's the movies I haven't seen in 30 years, you know, <laughs> and I'm realizing how influential they were on me. And yeah. I'm seeing these shots, I'm seeing these shots in the movies and I'm like, oh my God, I remember that. And it like hits me, you know, like, and I, I'm struck by it. And a couple of examples of like E.T. was a big one. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> like when I saw, I saw that when I was a kid and it, it terrified me, but it was also super exciting <laughs> and just amazing. And um, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, I didn't realize how much of an influence really? it was on me. <laughs> I watched it like a year ago for the first time in 20, 30 years. And it was like one of those things where I was like, oh my God, this is like, this is why I like filming. <laughs> but it was like in there, it's in, in somehow in my mind, but it disappeared for, you know, like I didn't think it's not an active thing that I'm thinking about. Right. But like revisiting some of those movies, I get to see that and get to realize like that I've had this uh, kind of this filmmaking mind thing going on for longer than I realized, you know. That is so true, though. When you watch the, these movies that you've seen when you were a kid, like E.T. is definitely one for me. Or, yeah. um, uh, uh, like, so many different movies. Like, I was watching even Pokemon <laughs> the other day, revisiting that. Like, you know, those animes, those old animes. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's, it's funny how even those little things have an impact now on the types of visuals I think of or, you know, things that inspire me, storytelling-wise or whatever. Like, it's funny to look at, go back. Some, some of them are not good. Like some of the movies sure. I thought were really great when I was a kid. Yep. Same here. There's some bad, bad movies that I love. <laughs> right? I still, I mean, I still love them. No key. And it's in there. And it, it all, it all influences you in some way or another, right. you know? Right. right. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. 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 That's why I recommend everybody to just watch as many stuff as you can, good or bad. Micah was watching some, uh, a movie or TV show that you were like, oh, it's bad, but you should watch it regardless. Sam had the same experience. Oh, what was it? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, it was the uh, the fuck it list on Netflix. I it was good, it? but it was also like there were some moments where I was like, yeah, this is like kind of cheesy. There's too much dialogue here. Blah 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 blah. It's good. You should watch it, but like it's not that good. Don't put your expectations. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing with that though is that you're able to, as writers, I guess you could do that too with like cinematography, but like you can see something and then what would you do to make it better or sure. you know you start questioning things and then i know that helps me a lot as a writer an actor whatever it may be but like yeah to, to be able to watch something if you don't like something well what would you do and make it better yeah you know? yeah, yeah. um i have one i have another question for you so you are an emmy award winner okay let it be known for those who didn't know, now you know. We brag about that, by the <laughs> way. We yeah, about I pray. Thanks. We'll That's... brag for you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so um, first, what projects did you win for? Uh, so the first one, I it was it was like early on in my career. Um, and I was working in NFL Films. And it was for a show that they produced called Road to the Super Bowl, I believe. And it's kind of some of the best shots of the year from NFL films from the whole season. Mm -hmm. And it's just pieced together of those. So generally it's, you know, I might've had like one shot in it or something like that, but I still want, so it's okay. Um, exactly. One shot. Yeah. And then the second one was, I think like in 2009, it was for hard knocks at the Jets training camp, which is an HBO series, uh, mm -hmm. you know, documentary show about following a, a football team through a training camp process and that one won for best cinematography for that season so okay and i episode i i operated a uh, shot on maybe like two or three episodes for that i was there for like three weeks maybe so so are you too. telling us you, you got you got two emmys two yeah yeah <laughs> so audience let that be known. <laughs> yeah, that I should have them right here, like on my shelf behind me. But they're yeah, not. They're, okay, they're in a closet yes, right now. Where are they? <laughs> where are they? They're in storage. Some, they're in a closet, I think. In I storage, know. collecting dust. In my old, my, in my old apartment, it was a little more spacious, and I think I had them on display there. But like in my room, not at like as soon as you <laughs> the walk in the room. door, like oh wow. <laughs> Welcome to my to room. Room. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Man, I just I just want to say all of my awards will be all out there in my house. As soon as you walk in the door, right? You walk in, you're gonna see my Oscar, my <laughs> Emmy, my Grammy. 
<laughs> with like, pictures wow. of you holding it and like yeah, exactly. and whatnot, mm-hmm. above yep. the yeah <laughs> and different celebrities <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah bragging rights that's yeah. right. right no i don't blame you i would do the same i have a friend who has whose mom has a room uh, for herself you know a lounge space or whatnot but she has her awards this big old picture of herself this portrait I might have a room like that for about a word. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, you know? Nothing wrong with that. No. Show, show it reminds it me of what it reminds you of what you've done. And like that's, yeah. that's you know, it's not bad. No, honestly, yeah. It's not a bad thing. That's that, that's what's so good about that it. Mean, Matt, I, I think it's about time for you to take those Emmy Awards out of storage and show it off. That's them off. <laughs> I think I did that, Yo. Right when I when I won the first one, I definitely like had it out for a little while and my friends would come over and like want to pick it up and like all that stuff. And, and they're actually they heavier. Heavy? They're heavier than you would think. They're oh. not super light. They're probably like, I don't know, 10 pounds or something. Oh. oh yeah. And they're tall, you know, they're like, you know, like pretty big. Is that tall? Oh, well. Wow. And a half or something. It's the wings. It's the wings. <laughs> spiky wings. <laughs> right. Yeah. Spiky wings. How did it feel to win? Wow. You know, to be acknowledged in that way. I think the fir- the first one I won, I, I I was definitely excited about it. And I thought it was really cool, but in, in some way I didn't really feel like it deserved it because I was yeah. just like a small contributing factor to the whole thing. And I, I don't think I was really, I didn't feel like it was anything that I necessarily did that helped win it. I mean, yeah, but I mean, I know there's like pieces put together, but the second one I definitely took a little more ownership in and felt better about, you know, just because I, I, I did have you know, some, some creative shots that I thought made the show that could potentially help, mm-hmm. you know, push it over the edge to win. So like the second one, I was more, a little bit more excited about. And then over the years since then, I've, or around that time and since then, I've been nominated for not just me, but, you know, my other coworkers at NFL. We were nominated for a bunch of other ones with Hard Knocks and some other shows. And losing some of those was also like, kind of like, oh, shit, you know, you really... <laughs> You know, yeah, when you do put a lot into it and, and you don't win, it's it kind of stinks. But it's just to be nominated as yeah. you, you know, like just to be considered, you know, that good or, or the work that you guys, that we all did was that good. was was pretty special. So, yeah. no, but I'm thankful for it. And I'm like, you know, I'm super appreciative of my time at NFL and I learned so much. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so yeah, awesome. How many years did you spend in the NFL? I mean, you're still working with them, right? Yeah, freelance for them from time to time. Um, yeah. I was there for like almost, I was staffed with them for almost 14 years. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, a long time. So I shot a lot of games, a couple hundred yeah. games, 15 Super Bowls, something like that. So been which, around it for a while. Which one was your favorite to shoot? Which Super Bowl? Uh, I hate I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's a hard one. <laughs> I'm, 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 I can't like they, it's, a, they it's a blur. I remember having great, amazing moments at each one, and they were all special. And some of the, I got to see all those halftime performances, and those were all fantastic. Like that was definitely a highlight. It was to be there for all that stuff. I think the Prince Miami Super Bowl. It was the worst for the conditions for shooting in. It was a downpour the entire time. Um, it was really, really, really heavy rain, and then he came out and did his thing. It was just. That was insane. That was crazy. Yeah, that that was a highlight. That didn't really have as much to do with the game. It was more about him, his performance <laughs> yeah. at halftime. But that still it was all part of the whole thing, right? You know, that's what the Super Bowl is about. It's not just. I the- mean, yes, the Super Bowl is about the commercials and the halftime show. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The game. The game, not so much. The game is cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's a game going on. I forgot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In between the commercials. I told you. Um, so fourteen years with the NFL, um, what made you decide to start doing narrative work? You know, after um, all that time. I don't know, I just, I, like I said, I always loved movies and I just wanted to see what it would be like. And the few times that I did do those kind of projects um, outside, like with some friends in Philadelphia where I was living, um, it was great. It was just really fun and just, it's just, you just create something from nothing, you know, or documentaries, you, you just, you collect and you're just like pulling and you're shooting, you're telling the story visually by shooting what you want, right? So you're controlling the, uh, 
what people see, but at the same time, it's things that are really happening in front of you, you know? So you're just kind of like collecting this information. And then the story is like pieced together later on in editing. And with, with narratives, I, always, I like that it was, you build something up from nothing. You know, it's, yeah. there's a story, it's written, you discuss how it should be shot, how it should be acted and all that, the blocking, the movement. And, and then when you do it, it's just kind of, it feels amazing. It's just like, all of a sudden you just have this like finished product, even though it needs editing and all that stuff. But like you just, at the end of a day of shooting narrative work, you, you know what you got, you know? Mm -hmm. Or documentaries, you just shoot, 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 shoot. And you know, what you, you kind of know what you get, but you kind of forget too. And yeah. it's a little different because you just collect so much, you know, yeah. you, just, you just shoot so much and you can make some, you know, kind of magic out of that. But when you shoot narrative, it's just, you just, you get what you need and you know, that's what you need. And it's just, it's just, it's a different kind of, uh, I don't know, like, not a, I don't know, reward system or something like that, where you, you just feel like you accomplish something in a different kind of way. And that, to me, that was really great. I think that, that was really exciting, so. Mm -hmm. And I think also, you know, getting to tell a story, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, with, exactly. with, with characters and a plot and, and all of that is like, it's just so interesting all across the board and and being behind the camera, like, for, we'll get there. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you a question first, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> my one time experience uh, uh, Matt when when Irby bought you our lowly script and was like can you please read this <laughs> and, and you read it and you liked it but what made you say yes to coming on board for Slip Filter um I mean first it starts with like me just like kind of getting to know Irby and like ha and like knowing he's a great guy and like trusting in him and knowing that he wasn't messing around, you know, like I didn't think he was just going to be somebody that's like looking for a favor to try to gain something, you know, like I, I really have, a, he's very genuine. And like, I, I sense that from the beginning with him. So like, I knew when he approached me that he was like taking it seriously right off the bat, you know? So like that kind of made me approach it like, or, you know, could kind of receive it a little bit in a more serious tone too. Um, so, and also I was like, you know, I was kind of touched that he thought of me to do it. Like, I thought that was really great. And like, I, I felt, you know, that, that was really nice of him. So, and then I just liked the story. I, I thought it was great. It, it's, it's just a relatable character that I think it could, you know, so many different people and so many different backgrounds of life or whatever uh, could, uh, could relate to. And I just thought it was a really strong story and in one that needs to be told because a lot of people struggle and they don't know how to, to, you know, face some conflicts and everything. And it's just like, it's, so, it was, I just thought it was a really great story that should be told. And, and if somebody could see it and it could help one person, you know, with their personal struggles, then like, that's a, that's an accomplishment, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, thank you, Matt, for what you said. Sure. Um, I have to say that when it came time for us to, you know, start reaching out to people, um, and especially, I knew a cinematographer was going to be so important because even while we were working on the, the script, we had a, you know, a vision. We knew, you know, we had a good idea of how we wanted this to look. And even in the script, you know, there were certain things that we were like, oh, no, well, this is how, especially since Sam was directing it, yeah. you know, we already knew what she had in mind. Um, and I, ne I knew I needed somebody who had the patience and who, you know, <laughs> cared. We had, like I said earlier, you know, we didn't know too much about what to expect or how to do it, even though we may have seen stuff on YouTube and whatnot, but like it's different when you're doing it yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I, knew, I knew I needed somebody like that. And having worked with you on Via, the Viacom shoot, and then we did a, a, a small little indie film. Um, was it? Yeah, film. <laughs> um, and just seeing you on that, that set, seeing how you worked with those people, um, you know, it, it you were the first person that came to mind. Yeah, well, thank um, you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you definitely proved why, you know, you, you were the best fit, for sure. Like, you, not only did you believe in the project, but you were definitely there to help us throughout the, you know, the whole way. Um, and I really appreciate that. I'm going to say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, then go back to it real quick about the script. It's like, I... I 
just kind of forgot this point, but like it's right away after reading it, I just, there was all these like really kind of like cinematic moments in the script and it, it, I could just tell it was like a lot more thought out than just a, just a story. It wasn't just a story. It was, it was this, it was written in a, in, in a film format and you, I could just sense it and I could, I had all these ideas right away from like reading it of how it should look or how it could look and what kind of shots could help tell that story. So I think you guys did a great job in that sense. And like, that was another thing that, you know, attracted me to it. Thank it was, you. It was very well thought out and it just like right away had like great visuals to go along with it, I could tell, you know. Yeah, it, it was definitely a visual heavy film mm -hmm. um, script because uh, we knew that we needed to be able to, because Brandon isn't somebody who is going to say everything he's thinking, you know, so we have to be able yeah. to show it. And since it was through his perspective, the whole film, you know, we knew visuals is going to be so important. Oh, sure. Um, so thank you. I'm happy that you know, that yeah. came across. <laughs> oh, it definitely came across for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, I always oh, kind of okay. rag on Irving and Sam because I didn't have the opportunity to be on set and work with you guys um, on that day. But seeing the shots that uh, you and Sam kind of worked together to create were just so amazing. And I thought very, very unique. There were a lot of shots in there where I was like, oh, I never would have thought to like even see that from that perspective. So, yeah. um, and Sam could probably jump in on this as well since you guys collaborated. Um, mm -hmm. Could you tell me how you kind of like went about composing those shots and creating a visual aesthetic for the film overall? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think Sam and I talked a good bit about it beforehand and kind of pieced together what shots would help tell that scene, you know, and like convey the message. And we wanted to, I guess, feel like we were really with Brandon on it. You know, we wanted to like really be in his head a little bit um, without it feeling like two point of view or a little bit not real. Um, Cause you know, so I think, yeah, sorry, I lost my train. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Yeah, but Sam, like she had some good ideas about what kind of shots would tell the, that story of the scene and I think I had the similar ones as her but she also was great in the sense that if something if I would frame something up a certain way she would just be like nah don't like it or yeah that's perfect <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking <laughs> and like I think that was even though Sam you haven't directed too many things like it's it was I was impressed that you you know you knew kind of right on right away what you were looking for and what you didn't like which is like kind of just as important as what you are liking you know you, you it's really important to not to not shoot something if you don't like it mm -hmm. and i think you did a great job yeah. in that sense thank you man. I, I really appreciate that it's true <laughs> though it's totally true <laughs> Irby and Micah know right away if I don't like something, I'm like, nope, that's yep. not how I see it. She's <laughs> over it. <laughs> that's good, though. You don't want to, yeah, it's why waste time? It's just a waste of energy, waste of time, and it's a shot you're not going to use in the film anyway, so why should right. it? Mm -hmm. but, yep. but that's the thing, though. That's why I, I, I stress to say that I'm so thankful because not many DPs and experienced DPs would take the ideas of a novice director, you know? And, and I appreciate the fact that you saw where I was coming from and, and you, you took my vision and you put it along with your vision and we collaborated mm -hmm. so beautifully and we ran along with it. So mm -hmm. I can't wait, Matt, for you to come back and, and shoot the rest of the movie. I'm telling you, the three of us are working hard on making it better. We've learned so much, we have grown as writers and, and our visionary like input is just so much on a, another level and, and we're, we can't wait to continue. No, production. it's great. Me too. I would love to, love to do it. So, um, But even with like, even watching Blue Reverie, you and I was talk we're talking about this before, Matt, um, seeing how, you know, you were able to work with um, sitting even for that film um, and breaking down that cinematography as well um you know do you want to talk about exactly how how do you approach like things where you do have to uh, uh like i don't know you do you want to talk about the, the your experience with blue reverie and the, the cinematography for that how that came about as well because i thought that was very interesting the way you were discussing that yeah for that i knew the director wanted to have it almost as dreamy as possible you know like a kind of a 
somewhat grounded in reality, but also not really at all. It was like kind of a fine line. And like, I, I feel like weaving those two things together was definitely a little bit difficult. But I think through some of the camera movement and some of the, just the framing um, and, you know, some camera stuff I was doing with like filtration and stuff like that, I think we got a look that was kind of those two things together where it, it felt kind of real, but at the same time, you know, it's not, there's something different about it. And there's something that's like, kind of like, it's not a real place and these are not real people. Um, yeah. And I, she had a very clear vision in her mind of what she wanted to do. And I just, you know, did my best to try to help fulfill that. So. Yeah. Like watching it definitely felt like I was watching something that was out of this world. It felt very, like you got shot here in America, but I felt like you got shot, you know, in Asia or like different places around the world, honestly, because it was so like a combination of so many different things. But I think that's because, like you were saying, of the, sh the shots you chose for that. Um, yeah, we were, we, were, we were very careful about framing and what we didn't show, basically. Like we didn't want to see, even if it was just like a corner of a room that made it look like a real room. And if we just panned a little to the left, it's like all of a sudden it's like kind of a more abstract or dreamy right. kind of space. And we were very, very careful right. about that. It was, it was, I mean, she was very particular about like not seeing certain things, you know, mm -hmm. um, which was a challenge for sure because we didn't have really very much of a budget at all. Um, but we had some amazing people that worked with us with locations and contributed some like great spaces for us. And, and Sating was very good about finding those spaces and making them work. And then, you know, right when we got to the location, we would just like just bust our ass and just start shooting. And it was very loose and running around and kind of just basically me with a camera, you know, like it really wasn't a whole lot more involved than that, you know, but we had some, we had some people help out along the way, like for different scenes and everything, but we would just be, I mean, it, it like literally would be driving from one place to another and see something like out the window and she'd be like, Oh, can we That's just get car. a couple of shots over there? And we'd run out and get a couple of shots, you know, that kind of thing. So, right. So we knew, I knew that it was going to be kind of um, the way it was going to be edited and pieced together was going to be like almost, not montage or anything like that, but piece together elements from various places, you know, and some of the yeah. in-between scenes were gonna be kind of more dreamlike and everything. And one little montage or like kind of uh, abstract kind of sequence could be pieced together from like five different locations, you know? Mm -hmm. So I had to like keep that in mind with like having things kind of match a little bit and stuff like that, so. Yeah, and that makes, that makes a lot of sense now that you say that because like there were, even though it was the same Scene, but like there were shots that seemed like they were from different places yeah um, yeah so like the combination of all that I think it was very smart definitely made it feel surreal even more surreal yeah I think it was the, that was the idea for sure yeah and even your um you were talking about how budget also plays a part in the choices you make um with split filter it was the the teaser mm -hmm. was just a car scene and just having that limited Space, you know, you being in the back on in the trunk, you know, trying to get the, the right shot. Or my favorite shot was the um, the rear view mirror shot. Mm -hmm. but, um, yes. yeah, isn't that like, well, no, no, well, the rear view, but the side view mirror, both mirror shots. Oh, yeah, were, yeah, sure. Were amazing. Um, but especially the um, side view mirror while the car was driving away and using that mm -hmm. negative space mm -hmm. to also, you know, highlight what Brandon was feeling at that time. I thought, that shot like was brilliant. Oh, Perry, thanks. our editor, would he say call it the Kubrick shot? I think he would say. Okay. Um, <laughs> while we were editing, <laughs> very Kubrick. <Yeah. laughs> like, you know, I think a lot of those kind of shots for me come from the documentary shooting, where you are like, I would be riding along in a car with a person that we're telling a story about, and and I just have to get all these like cool, in interesting shots, and the editors mm -hmm. can use them however. And that's why, I, so I'm always looking at shots, and I'm always like looking for shots and looking for moments to help tell the story. And I think my background in documentaries definitely is going to help me with narrative filmmaking. You know, just because mm -hmm. I'm open to shooting whatever. You know, I don't have any planned mm -hmm. like strict idea of like what can be done, what can't be done. You know, mm -hmm. kind of open minded. Mm -hmm. in that. So. Mm -hmm. And you also do photography yeah. as well. Not, I don't know if professionally, but like, you know, that's something that you do. Oh, do you yeah, think yeah. Photography has helped you. 
Oh, definitely. To cinematography. Yeah. Yeah. I've been taking it. Yeah. In the past four months, I've been taking a lot of pictures and I'm hoping to eventually do something with them, like either a book or some, a gallery show of some sort, but I'm, yeah. Oh, that's so I need cool. some time to get around to, yeah, I just need time to actually get around to, to piecing it together and, and doing it. It's a lot of, it's a fair amount of work, but, but it's something I've been more interested in in the past couple of years, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, Matt, you talked about, um, you know, just being able to get shots that might work um, here and there, but are there like general rules to follow in cinematography and do you ever break those rules? I think for covering. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. I think for like covering a scene uh, and telling a story uh, with characters and blocking, I, there's definitely rules that you should follow, but they can be broken yeah. too. Um, but as far as like some the B roll or like interstitial stuff, you know, other shots like those, they don't really have as many rules in my opinion, and you can kind of do whatever you want and. I think you're seeing that more with the way television and films are shot now, uh, where there's just a lot more abstract framing and tons of negative space and very moody, you know, scenarios. And I, I think that's pretty exciting. But as far as like covering a, a scene with a couple of characters, there's definitely like a starting point with rules, you know, of how to do it. And then from there, if you're aware of those rules, like you can break them, but you just should be aware of them in the first place. Like there was, there was one shot that we did in Blue Reverie, which was uh, Sitting had an idea to start with POV and if the camera's moving into a character who's talking directly into the lens and then he like looks down and when he looks down, I, the camera pulls back out to reveal a two shot of those two people talking. And she was like, do you think we could do that? And I'm like, I was like, I've never seen a POV shot go into a coverage shot of like two people. Yeah. But why not? You know, like I don't know. We we knew what we were, we knew we were, we were aware of what we were doing. It wasn't an, like an accident or a mistake or like mm -hmm. trying to like hide it or something. I mean, we tried to hide a little bit, so it wasn't like super weird and wonky. Yeah. But um, it, that kind of thing I think can be done. And you know, we were aware of it, and I don't know how the audience perceived it or what they thought of it, or if they or if they even noticed. You know, um, or it, hopefully it was done in a smooth way that they might not even notice that it went from a POV to like a two shot of the of one of the one of those characters was the POV. You know, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there are definitely rules, but as long as you're aware of them and you're not breaking them like in a very ostentatious way, I think it's it's okay. You know, yeah. right? It, it it's it's all about what you're trying to get people to feel, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Right? So, so when you, if you decide to break a rule, like the 180 rule or, you know, rule of thirds or whatever, um, it has to be for a reason to make the audience feel a certain type of way in the middle of that story. Exactly. Um, yeah, you have to use it right. Yeah. Yeah. We've been um, also from a writer's perspective learning that there are some rules that we have to break as well. We've been sure. This quarantine has given us a lot of time to think about our split filter yeah. scripts and uh, work on things. There are definitely certain things where it's like, should we do that? Uh, let's just try it, see what happens. <laughs> um, speaking of quarantine, uh, creatively speaking, how have you been dealing with this? Because it's, it's really hard, I'm imagining as a cinematographer to like sit in your house and not be able to you know, <laughs> go out and shoot on shoots. Yeah, it's been tricky. Um, l l luckily, I've been caring for my daughter full time. Not really caring because she's she's old enough to do some things on her own. But you know, it's like full time attention with her and helping her with her schoolwork for the last few months of schooling. So that definitely took a lot of my time. Um, and then you know, creatively, it was it was cool too because I got to we would do art projects and just random creative play where we're just you know building forts and stuff like that and like that it's not a necessarily like a direct substitute for filmmaking or shooting or anything like that but it's it's also very enjoyable and rewarding in a different kind of way you know and it mm -hmm. it just i don't know makes you feel a little more carefree a little more appreciative of the small stuff and you know takes the seriousness out of all of it a little bit just like mm -hmm. trying to yeah. you know fill, fill the day with a little joy and a little like carefree spirit is not a bad thing so and then also I've been taking a lot of pictures and I've been trying to like 
be a little more creative with the, the photos I take and have them tell a story, you know, if I can. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's like even moments like this, once you do, we do go back to work, you know, you'll be able to, I like, guess it's important to rejuvenate yourself, you know, because mm -hmm. we as artists take so much time to give and to give parts of ourselves and, you know, it's exhausting sometimes, but it's needed as part of the job. Um, but, you know, these moments, like, you know, taking time to be with your daughter and to create things with her, you know, she's so creative. So, like, there's so many different things I'm, I, like she wants to do. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I, I can only imagine how much that helps you as a person and as a creative as well, you know, when it's, it comes to your own work. Yeah, it's just fantastic. Just like to, she just comes up with stuff that, you know, as an adult, you just have all these like preconceived ideas of things and you have all these structures and like limitations and what can be done and can't be done. And, you know, a six year old kid doesn't really think that way. You know, they just, everything's open. Everything's fresh. They just do. They just do. They're just like, if this little Lego wants to go here because that's their friend, whatever, you know, it's like, it's just like everything's open and they're just having a ton of fun and the more they do that, the more enjoyable it is to them. And then just, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's great. I love it. Yeah. See, I love hearing you talk about your kid, your daughter so much, because it's so genuine. Like, you love her. You're a good, great father having seen you with her and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so how do you and your family cope with being away from home for extended periods of time? Like, yeah, that's really tricky. Like, last last summer was the first time I really did that. You know, I've traveled for years. So I'm like, I usually the, the, the trips are short, you know, usually a couple of days, a week or two, maybe. Um, but last summer was the first time that I was gone for an extended period of time. And my daughter is, um, at, you know, old enough to realize what was going on. And I was away for so long. And it was hard. It was definitely it was very hard for me. Um, but we tried to FaceTime as much as possible. We tried to, I came home on some weekends. They moved, I was in Charleston and they moved down to live with me for a whole month, which was just fantastic. Um, but yeah, and it, moving forward, I don't know. It's like, I'm willing to do that again. Cause I, I want to make it work, you know, like I, you know, first I have to earn money and, and but I, you know, if, if the project is, is exciting and it's like worthwhile then i want to do it you know like creatively too yeah, so yeah. um yeah it's just gonna be, i think it's just gonna be a balance that my we might have to uh to work on but my wife is like extremely supportive and she knows what i want with my career and she's willing to do more or less whatever it takes to make that happen and my daughter the more we talk about it the more we open we are with her about it the more she understands it too. And then the, the idea that this is what it takes to live the life we want to live. You know, if you want me to be, you know, sometimes I'm not working for almost a month or something, you know, just like in normal times, not just like quarantine, but, um, and, and it's great. Like the freedom that I have when that happens is fantastic. Like, it's just, it's great. I can spend so much time with her and, and, and my wife and like, it's just like, we all, we all benefit from it. So, there's, there's pros and cons and there's the trade-off, but you know, it's, it's definitely tricky. It's definitely tough. And it's, but we just don't want it to be, you know, damaging to anybody and you know, my daughter specifically, you know, we don't want her to like, of course. have emotional issues because of it. You know, it's definitely like a, a striking that balance and everything. So. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I guess, I mean, I'm not, but I can imagine that like the transparency is probably key. It's huge. You, you have to be open about it. And you just to say, this is what we have to do. Like, this is how our family operates. And the yeah. more she, and then, and then she feels like she's kind of part of it and that she has some ownership in it too, you know, and it, it gives her a little bit more control and it's not just us telling her what to do and this is how it is and take it or leave it kind of thing, you know? So she's, it, it gives her a little bit of like more ownership, which I think is important. So. And and that's why even times like we are in now is so important, you know, like during quarantine and and with the climate that we are in, you know, uh, socially, it's it's so important for her to know that she has both of her parents, you know, there with her. And, and you guys have you, you had all this time now to just grow more as one unit, yep. you know, and Absolutely. for a child that builds so much confidence oh, it's to so know that, confidence. you know, 
both parents are there and, and we're good. And, you know, because this, this time right now is so uncertain. Crazy. I know. Yeah, and she's definitely going through it with missing friends and the uncertainty of it all and what school is going to look like in the fall because we just don't know exactly. And But yeah. the, the idea I, we just try to convey to her is security, you know, that, that we are there. And, the, you know, we don't know what's going on in the world necessarily for the most part um, in the next few months or years or whatever. But we, she knows that we're there for her. She knows that she can always count on us and something may happen to us and we'll roll with it. But, you know, for the most part, we just are trying to instill some confidence and security there. Mm -hmm. so. That's awesome. Yeah, that's the thing with this, you know, industry, you know, when, you, when you're working in this industry, it's kind of tough to balance, you know, the, the work and the family and all that you need to have. What I'm hearing is that you have a, not only a strong and very supportive partner, but a very understanding um, daughter as well. And that's something that I've heard from so many different people who, you know, have been working in the industry for years. Because honey, I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> um, have a relationship of my own, but you know, yeah. balancing all that, it, it isn't easy. So to have that right partner, you know, the partners, you yeah. know, in the, in the journey is like so important. Oh, it's something. huge. Yeah, it's, it's huge. I'm so appreciative of my wife and being so open and understanding about the type of work that I want to do. And it's great. She, she's a driven career woman as well. And like, I love the work that she, she does. And it's like, I, I'm always standing behind her with that stuff too. So it's like, yeah, we're really there for each other. And it's, it's huge. It's a very important, you know, yes. we're lucky we found each other. We're lucky. We, you know, it's mm -hmm. lucky in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. You're a lucky man. That's for sure. Um, we talked a little bit about the uh, climate of uh, what is currently happening today, um, not only with like quarantine, but also with the Black Lives Matter movement uh, taking a full swing. It's a very um, unique time in history, I would say. Um, what are your thoughts on the Black Lives Matter movement? I, I it's, it's fantastic that it's happening and it's come to such a such a boiling point and I, I just hope that there like there is going to be some kind of real change from it you know it's like it's it's been a very very long time coming and it's just it's nice to see how many people around the world are getting behind it and fighting for it it's just like such an important thing and I'm I'm just very hopeful that something can really come out of this and that we as a society just don't revert back to the old ways of operating and you know, mm -hmm. I just hope that it's it's like a real turning point, you know. But I think it's fantastic. I think it's it's great how involved everybody's getting. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, there's so many like peaks and valleys when it comes mm -hmm. to like the Black Lives Matter movement and racial injustice in this uh, country. But we're at like a really, really interesting peak right now where there's not only just like, like you said, like black people are involved, but there's also like so many different people from so many different backgrounds and so many different yeah. countries also fighting the same fight. So it's just, it's really amazing to see. Yeah, and it's like corporations are getting involved and you know, big companies and everything are standing behind it. And that's like, that's a that's a big sign, you know? And you know, like the 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 Washington Redskins changing their name, that's a big step. And like, uh, like there's all these things that are starting to like kind of happen and th these are all, some people don't see them as a big deal, but they really are, you know, and it's, I think the more of that we can see in the, in the coming years, the, the, the more you realize that this is like, it's all for something, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we've also found, uh, and we've had many talks uh, between the three of us that like, uh, a big form of protest is also through art. Um, is there anything that you, uh, plan on doing as part of, as your part, sort of, in your art work to display these times or this movement in any way? Traveling split filter stories. I like that. Yeah, I mean, this split filter story is, is definitely one of them. Um, you know, I would love to be part of more projects that help tell stories like this and help get some attention out there. Um, I have a, a film that I shot, uh, worked on a couple years ago, off and on, that is should be coming out somewhat soon. It's about Native Americans, um, and specifically about a, a basketball player who played in the night in early 1990s. But it's also about the injustice that's been going on for you know several hundred years to Native Americans in this country, and 
that kind of story needs to be told and there, there's just a lot to it and but yeah i don't have any real specific thing besides that right now that i'm that i'm working on unfortunately well as not just as an artist but as as you know a cishet white man in america what are you doing to not only better you know the environment like ev everyone else the black community but also probably a little bit more importantly yourself and those that you know in your family and you know other white people during this time or what do you think you can do if you not doing anything right now what do you think you can do? i think i can you know be be more vocal about things and if i see something wrong and the, the way people's attitudes are and the way they're treating each other or the way they even think about each other just speak up more about it you know and just call people out on it more and i kind of do that a little bit in the past but it's now really is a time that you just can't sit back and and let people say the same old stuff and that's unacceptable you just you just kind of have to say like that's not good enough you know and like that's a bad attitude and it's yeah and it's we as white people it's just like we we don't know what it's like you know and i think we all i think white people just need to come to terms with that and like we don't know what it's like to be black in america and we just have to be more open-minded about it and realize that there's huge injustice and it's just not fair you know mm -hmm. so i think we just all need to just be more open and accepting to other people's struggles and yeah and it's not an individual thing it's not one person's situation that's like bringing them down or something like that it's 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 systematic it's huge and it's just oppressive and it's been that way for a very long time and it's it's time that people really need to think about it and realize that there's there's more to it than you know just an individual story it's it's the way our system is designed is to keep people down and it's it's not it's not good yeah no that's yeah. for sure um i, and, I you know <laughs> sorry I, I was just gonna say that i definitely agree with you i think that people need to, specifically white people need to take the time to discuss amongst themselves, especially. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. Um, because black people already know the struggle. <laughs> we know, yeah, we know what sure. it is, where it's like, we know what racism is. So like, it's, 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 I think majority the white man's job to break the system, to change the system, to, mm -hmm. to, to pave new roads, to create a new America, um, honestly, because that's what it, it, it kind of is going to have to be in many ways. Yeah, I agree. Because, yeah, because America hasn't been living up to what it's been preaching all this time. Um, but, yeah, so, like, I agree with you. Like, it, there's so many different, you know, things that need to get changed. But that's definitely one thing that needs to happen more often. Yeah. No, I, I understand that these conversations are very uncomfortable to have, you know, mm -hmm. especially... Um, for non-black people who's never had to live through um, racism and systemic racism. Um, but I truly uh, am such an advocate for self-education. We're in the time right now where um, there are so many books out there and, you know, us as artists, we have so, so many um, movies that uh, represent the... Um, that represent the, the black voice um, mm -hmm. and we need more, we need more. And now this is why, you know, we're up and coming artists who wants to be movers and shakers of this industry, you know, and we want to bring people like you along with us, Matt, because first of all, you are already an open person. You are received, you have received us in such open arms and we thank you for that. And we want to continue you know, um, being a voice um, for those who don't have a voice. And, and it's things like that that you can do to help us, Matt, mm -hmm. to be our voice when ours are muted because our voices are constantly muted in America. And, and it's stories like that that um, we, will, we have the ability to tell, you know? And hopefully, hopefully you, we can us and you, you know, in our separate uh, careers can continue telling stories 
that that matter you know absolutely um yeah yes yeah that's that's another reason i was like uh, you know attracted to the the script too it's just like it, it's a story that needs to be told for many reasons you know and if i can help bring that to the screen bring it to audiences like i had something i really want to do and really care about it's important yeah yeah, yeah. Absolutely. and and listening Matt, oh go ahead Sam. go, go ahead, ahead Sam. go ahead no you got something gonna... I was going to, I was going to, no, I was going to segue into an, an interesting question. Like who would you like to work with in the industry? Um, whether they are by POC uh, artists or white artists, like who, who do you want to work with to tell these types of stories or any stories for that matter? Um, it's a tricky one. I <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt. I'm sorry. I'm never, I'm never good with the questions of like, tell me one specific thing. You know, like I can't, I don't know. I just want to work on these kinds of stories, you know, and I can be part of telling them, whether it's documentaries of things that have happened in the past or things that are happening now or scripted of, uh, uh, you know, representation of a person or uh, of the situation. Like, I, I just want to kind of help tell those stories working with you guys is like a dream in that sense, you know, cause it's a tell, it's telling these stories and like, I'm serious. Like I there's yeah, obviously like there's some, some big directors and people out there that I love to work with to tell like very important stories, but I don't know. I don't have, sorry. I don't have just like one specific person or something. I don't know. It's just Okay. Well name those few of, of the people, the big directors. Who are they? Well, Ava DuVernay is pretty fantastic. Um, Who? Ava DuVernay. Ava. Ava. Oh, yes! Ava She's my best friend in my mind. In yes. your mind. <laughs> yes. We love Ava in this Ava. house. <laughs> yeah. I mention her in almost every podcast. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. do. For real, man. Well, she's fantastic. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, she's Ava, really if good. you're listening, all four of us wants to work with you. Yeah. Shout out Ava somebody who knows Ava, somebody who knows somebody who knows Ava, let her know. Shoot her an email or something. Because <laughs> she's not responding to mine anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one last question before we, you know, wrap things up, guys. So what's the biggest advice you would give to a young filmmaker or even a younger Matthew Lyons who is just starting out? Um, I think uh, being open to things is huge, you know, and not knowing where something is going to come from is huge. You know, you just have to be open to everything all the time, which is like really simplistic and saying, but um, the more open you are, the, the more you are willing to accept new things when they come to you. And mm -hmm. a little, an opportunity can come out of nowhere if you're open to it, you know, and it, they really can. And I, I believe in that. And I think also, you know, like having some ideas of what you want to do, having some vision, some goals is huge. Um, and then surrounding yourself with people that are in a similar mindset or positive thinking that are encouraging and wanting you to do more. And, and I think a lot comes from that. I think friendships are huge in that sense and, and, and professional collaborations too. Um, but I think an openness to things and just meeting new people and, you know, like, you just never know where things are going to come from. You know, like Irby, like I think when we met a couple of years ago, at the time I met you, I don't know if I would have thought that we'd be working together like later on on such like such a, an amazing project. Um, but I'm glad that it did, you know, and it's like, it's just, you, you have to treat everybody with respect and yeah, I mean, treating with everybody with respect is huge and being open to their ideas and not being above it is also very important. And cause you just, uh, yeah, and then just absorb as much as you can, you know, like suck up knowledge from everybody, like take it from everyone and everywhere and, mm -hmm. and things will eventually start to unfold and 
you'll be in the right place at the right time because you're in a way putting yourself there because of your attitude, you know? Right. You never know who you're going to learn from. You never know, know who you're going to learn from. Or if, if the crafts person is going to be the next big producer, you know, exactly. or, or even your best friend, you know, yeah. <laughs> you never know. So you always be your most authentic self and be nice to people yeah. and caring and, yeah, and at NFL Films, we always had interns that came through, and I always kind of tried to make a point to, to, you know, respect them, because I had people early on when I started there um, treat me as an adult, treat me with respect, mm -hmm. not just some kid that didn't know anything, which was what I was, but they didn't treat me that way, and it meant a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just something I always I try to give, give back to people now, like in the sense of like, everybody's in a similar situation when they're coming up. They don't know everything. They don't know everybody so like they they need to learn and they need to grow and there's only so many ways you can do that and help from above is like definitely a big way people can learn and grow so. yeah yeah yep. meant to that mm -hmm. and then one day whoever's listening and to this advice maybe one day you too will be a two-time emmy award <laughs> <laughs> i had to throw it out there yeah. oh, <laughs> all right i'm gonna get them up on the wall I'll, I'll show i'll send you guys a picture on the oh yeah. yes, please. Yes. Yes. Maybe right in the entranceway. As soon as you walk in the apartment, you'll see him. Yes. I love it. Okay. We'll post it up. We'll be those friends that are like, can we hold it? Can we yeah, exactly. Can yeah. I get my picture with it? Just one, please. Can you hold my camera while I make a yeah. face? <laughs> <laughs> I would like. <laughs> Just put your finger over the nameplate so they can't see. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bring my own plate. Oh, my name. Yeah, on exactly. <laughs> put it on top of here. Oh, thank you so much, Matt, for joining. No, us. thanks for having me, guys. It's been a, it's been a pleasure, and like I, I love working with the three of you, and it's you guys have great energy and great drive and great visions. So like it's just something I want to keep being part of. Thank you. For sure. We love you. We love, love Matt you. Lyons. Thank you, Matt. So much. Um, and thank you to your family as well, for, because you know without them you wouldn't be who you are, and you wouldn't you know be as open and loving and you know, probably. So, like, I, th I thank them as well. Say hi to your wife. And yeah. Sure. For us. Um, but, yes, thank you for everything that you're doing and are going to do. And Slip Filter, we're going to finish it. And here's some, hopefully more projects in the future. Absolutely. To together. Yeah, I want to see this film get made because it's going to be great. It's a great story. Uh -huh. Great script. Me too. Me too. Me too. Um, all right. Thank you for everyone for listening. And take a little time to breathe. <sighs> Bye, y'all. <laughs>